We welcome you to another edition of The Beat from the 12th Man Studios inside the south end zone of Kyle Field. I'm Will Johnson. We begin today with Texas A&M baseball. Entering the weekend, they were one game behind Mississippi State for first place in the SEC West. And they visited the land of the left field lounge over the three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, trying to get right back on top of the division standings. One of the great venues in the game played host to the Aggies. It was a top 10 matchup, A&M and the Bulldogs. Friday night, Brigham Hill was unfazed by the environment. He threw six and two thirds, allowing just two runs. He got help defensively from J.B. Moss, who robbed this would-be home run early in the contest. A&M got a fourth inning homer from Hunter Melton. He had three hits in this one, and the Aggies led 4-3 entering the ninth. They break it open in their final at bat. Nick Banks, opposite field, a grand slam. He went three for five. The Aggies score six in the ninth. They win 10 to three to start the series. Saturday, A&M gets five runs in the third, helped by a big triple off the bat of Joel Davis. The Aggies are up seven to two at one point, but the Bulldogs bark back. They start to tack on runs. They're down seven six in the bottom of six. They've got two on and nobody out. State is primed to stake themselves to the lead. But Mark Ecker collars them. He enters the jam, gets three straight outs. He throws four scoreless and hitless innings. All this on the road in front of 15,078 fans, the second largest on-campus NCAA baseball crowd in history. Ecker rises above it and closes out Mississippi State. A&M wins 10 to six to claim the series. Sunday looking for the sweep. The Aggies were up four to one, then lost the lead, but they took it right back with four runs in the eighth. Hunter Melton delivered a clutch extra base hit that scored two of those. In the ninth, Nick Banks, a double that scores a couple more. Banks had three more hits in the finale. He was named the SEC's player of the week. A&M beats Mississippi State 10 to five on Sunday. They sweep the series on the road, one of the most impressive displays in college baseball over the weekend. The Aggies left Starkville with a 29 and seven overall record and in first place in the SEC West. Texas A&M baseball this past weekend. They go to Starkville. They get the sweep of the Mississippi State Bulldogs in front of some large crowds at Duty Noble Field. And right here on the beat, we are joined by the Aggies head coach, Rob Childress. He and A&M will welcome Alabama this weekend. Coach, uh, looking back at the weekend, it was, it was just terrific. You score 10 runs in each of the games. Is it almost fun watching your offense go at it like that, swinging the bats the way they were? It's a lot of fun. I mean, and it has been for the last couple of weeks and for the most part all year long. And, and when you look at our lineup that's posted on the video board before the game, when you've got nine guys hitting over 300, you know you're going to have a chance in every inning to set something up and, and get a couple of big hits, you know, to score some runs. But, you know, Coach Bolt, Coach Sealing, Coach Carlson have done an amazing job with an older group of hitters. And, you know, they know every guy in the lineup doesn't have to have a great day for us to be productive offensively. It's just about passing it to the next guy and them being a piece of a great lineup. Mm -hmm. Pitching was good too. Maybe the best of them all was Mark Ecker though. What he did on Saturday in front of 15,000 while Mississippi State was mounting a big comeback, he simply shut the door on the Bulldogs. It, it, very impressive. He, he really was. You know, Jace Fines had a solid start for us. We felt like we needed to go to the bullpen there in the Six inning and, you know, it, real quick, it almost got away from us. And Mark came in and with runners at first and second in a tie game and no outs and got a strikeout, a pop-up and a strikeout and goes four shutout innings for us. And we were able to pull away from them late. But Mark was the true hero on that Saturday. It was extremely loud, like you said, 15,000 people there. And, you know, for Mark to quiet the crowd like he did was, was a very, very impressive. And in situations like that, as a coach, it doesn't matter if, if you're four games into the year or 40, you're trying to find out things about your team always, leaving no stone unturned. 15,000, hostile environment, Mississippi State's mounting that comeback. 
is that when you learn some things about your school? Well, you do. And, you know, we went on the road to Florida a few weeks ago and, and didn't play well. I felt like we learned a lot about our team at, at that weekend as well. And I made the comment early, I hope that, that weekend it's not going to define us. But I came back to our team. I said, I hope it does define us and that we learn something from this weekend because if we don't, what we're not going to do what we're capable of doing or what we want to do. And, you know, coming back from that weekend, I felt like we learned what it takes to win on the road and our players, our team learned what it, it takes to win on the road. It's extremely hard to win on the road in this league. And, you know, the, the Florida series ended up being a benefit to us this past weekend in, in Starkville. Mm -hmm. Also, going back to the offense here, you guys made a little bit of a switch uh, with Nick Banks and Ryan Burke. Most of the season you'd seen Ryan in the two hole, Nick at five. Well, they essentially flip flop. Seems like that's a solid move that, that has paid off for you guys. Well, for both of them, and Nick had a great weekend for us and started to swing the bat like he's capable of, and he's done a great job getting on base, and, and Ryan Burke's done a great job with runners in scoring position. It seemed like the logical move, and it's certainly paid off for us here the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and just this team as a whole, chemistry-wise, it seems like a fun group to be around, and we keep going back to this hostile environment at Mississippi State. They seem steady things don't bother them a whole lot, even if they're in that kind of venue. Well, we've got an older group and, and they've been through the battles in this league and they understand, you know, what they've got to do. And this weekend was about as hostile as you could ask for. And, and but it, it was somewhat comforting as well. I mean, there's a lot of maroon in the stands, very similar stadium to what Olsen Field was, you know, back in the day. And, and so our guys were comfortable and I felt like we competed for 27 innings as hard as we could compete. And Alabama comes in this weekend. And with them, we're at the midway pole of SEC play. And I think when you go through the last half of it, there will be postseason talk with a lot of teams, Alabama being one of them. It's kind of easy to say that you'll get the Crimson Tide's best shot at Olsen Field at Bluebell Park this week. Yeah. Well, we will. And the one thing that they're, they're going to bring to the field every day is great pitching. I mean, they've got a solid rotation, an outstanding bullpen, and we're going to have to go match them on the mound. Our opportunity is going to be limited from an offensive standpoint. And, you know, for us on the mound, we're going to have to make Alabama earn everything that they get. I say that every week, but, you know, Alabama's not going to overwhelm you offensively, but if you set up for many, some innings for them, they've got a chance to score some runs, and, you know, they're going to make it stand up with their pitching. They're very, very good on the mound. All right, we certainly appreciate your time. Congratulations on a good weekend. Good luck against the Crimson Tide. Thanks, Will. Rob Childress right here on the beat, Texas A&M and Alabama, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from Olsen Field at Bluebell Park. This portion of the beat is brought to you by Memorial Hermann, official sports medicine partner of Texas A&M Athletics. Welcome back to 12th Man Studios inside the south end zone of Kyle Field. Now on the beat, it is time for our all sports report. Aggie Equestrian wrapped up their season with a strong showing at the NCEA Championships in Waco this weekend. The fifth-ranked Aggies defeated number 12 Fresno State in the first round, 14-2. Next came the quarterfinals versus number four Oklahoma State. A&M wins 11-5. In the semifinals versus the top-ranked team in the country, Auburn, A&M fell 10-6. Auburn would go on to win the national championship. Another high-quality season from Aggie Equestrian, their final record was 11 and seven. And this team from a year ago, it, it leaps and bounds from a year ago. And uh, I know I keep talking about this, but one of the main things was consistency. We had some very strong, uh, for the entire year, some very strong, very consistent rides. Um, so all that we can ask is for these kids to go out there and have the best rides that they can. And across the board, um, especially here for three solid meets with, that were very intense, we had some really consistent, very good rides. Men's golf in Sea Island, Georgia for their SEC championships. They notched their highest finish as a member of the league, garnering second place, three shots behind the champion, Georgia. Individually, senior Andrew Lister and freshman Chandler Phillips both finished two over, tying for fifth place. Women's golf also competed in their SEC championships. They were fourth at the Greystone Country Club in Hoover, Alabama. The Aggies were conference champions last season. The women now look forward to May 5th through 7th when they host an NCAA regional at Traditions Club, their home course. 
Texas A&M softball hosted fourth-ranked Alabama this weekend. After losing the first two games, they got downright offensive to claim the final contest. The Aggies scored nine runs in the second inning, hit four homers for the game, and run-ruled the Crimson Tide. The final A&M 14, Bama 1. A&M is now 32-11 overall this year. On the tennis courts at the Mitchell Center, both the men and women were in action against LSU to wrap the regular season. The men beat the Tigers. They are now 25-8 and and are off to their SEC tournament this week in Columbia, South Carolina. The women also defeated LSU. They are 15-9 and and head to their SEC tournament. It also begins this week in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Track and field, they went to Los Angeles for dual meet action against UCLA this weekend. They both won, the men and the women. The top ranked men beat the number seven Bruins 94 to 51. The second ranked women topped the number three UCLA squad 81 to 64. The SEC Outdoor Championships are on the horizon May 12th through 14th in Tuscaloosa. Finally, congratulations to a couple of Aggie women's basketball players. Courtney Walker and Jordan Jones were selected in last week's WNBA draft. Walker went with the 16th pick overall to the Atlanta Dream. Jones was taken with the 34th selection by the Chicago Sky. Two more Aggies turning pro. Plenty of success happening with our spring teams right here at Texas A&M. Who better to discuss it with than Director of Athletics, Scott Woodward. He's in our studio next on The Beat. On January 8th, Texas A&M announced Scott Woodward as its new Athletics Director. He started the job in earnest in February, about two months in now, and we check in with Texas A&M's AD right here inside 12th Man Studios in the south end zone of Kyle Field. And Scott, it's been kind of a whirlwind tour for you since you began, I know, so thank you so much for the time. Oh, glad to be here. When we started off, one of the things you mentioned right away was your first task was to listen and to learn. You've gotten a little time to listen. Yeah. What have you learned about Texas A&M athletics? Well, the mo most important thing and the question I get the most is, is that are there any surprises? And I can sit here and say that, that every surprise has been a pleasant surprise. There's nothing that's alarmed me or, or, or shocked me or something that I didn't know. So from that standpoint, it's, it's really, uh, it's been a good thing. Mm -hmm. What we're coming off of recently, uh, as far as the Aggies, the basketball team just completed one of their best seasons ever. Billy Kennedy, you just gave him a contract extension. What did you see there that makes you feel so good about Billy Kennedy, what he's accomplished, and, and, and the future of Aggie basketball? Yeah, from day one, you just sense uh, the, the genuineness and the goodness that represents everything that Aggie values are about. And not only that, he does it in, in, a, in a very, good light as far as winning and losing. Uh, he, he's done something that, that, that's really special, uh, getting to the Sweet 16. And for me, it was extending him for the hope of getting uh, even further. And, and I think from what he's doing and how he's recruiting and, and, and how he's mentoring coaches that are getting head jobs to replacing them with great coaches mm -hmm. is really a, an impressive thing. And, and I think uh, uh, Aggie fans are going to have a lot to cheer for in the future, and, and uh, I think uh, there's still a lot of upside to our basketball program. Yeah, and I'm guessing in all your years in athletics, you've never seen anything like that comeback in round two against Northern Iowa with 12 down with less than a minute left. Nor do I ever think we'll ever see anything like that. <laughs> I agree with you. That's a once-in-a-lifetime event. Exactly. Moving on to football, spring practices are in the books now they'll go into off-season workouts you've gotten your chances to sit down with Kevin Sumlin what are your thoughts on the state of his program a uh, very very uh, impressive spring I thought uh, I really spent a lot of time going out to practices and watching the coaches coach and uh, I, I love the staff and uh, that the coaches uh, put together and who he has uh, obviously we're familiar with uh, coach Chavis but uh, uh, Coach Mazzone and, and, and the offensive staff is, is really 
uh, gelling and coming together uh, and, and I really like what I see obviously with the with the well-known uh, return of coach Turner and, and the way that offensive lines firing I really like that cohesiveness and I like the way that they're teaching and coaching up the kids uh, I think there's a, a good hope going into this uh, season and going into uh, obviously uh, fall ball also we're in the midst of a very good baseball season it's as difficult in baseball as it is in any sport in the Southeastern Conference, particularly in this league, yeah. in your past experiences. What importance is baseball to the SEC and the Aggies? Yeah, it's very much so. Uh, you know, you, you look at both uh, baseball and softball, because mm -hmm. I'm going to bring them up, because we're so dominant as a conference. I think six out of the ten teams are, 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 are or top 10 teams right. in, in, in the uh, Southeastern Conference, and it's just quite impressive, and our fans care about it, and we have a great uh, great support and a great venue in, in Bluebell Park and, what, and how we do things. It's just really a, a fun part of our lure and how we do it, and, and it's becoming a more and more popular sport, and, and it is competitive as heck, and, and uh, we'll have an a interesting uh, rest of the season to watch, but just have to remember that, you know, just like everything else, uh, how you do and how you peak at the end is what matters. And, and so um, watch closely uh, and, and we'll see where we end up. Certainly their stretch run in the postseason is right around the corner. And you mentioned softball. Sure. Uh, on your plate facilities wise is that program. They're hoping for a new stadium soon. So is track and field. Correct. How do you feel about where those projects stand? Uh, very good that we're going to go before and make a presentation to the Board of Regents and try to convince them that it's uh, in the best interest of uh, Texas A&M and the uh, athletic department to, to do these projects moving forward. I think uh, obviously uh, Coach Evans and Coach Henry have made the case that uh, excellence is, is already achieved and we just need uh, to continue that excellence with new facilities going forward and continue the promise of great programs and uh, I think that uh, you know arguably we have probably right now the worst facility in the Southeastern Conference in softball and and it's almost a, a, a shame that, that we cannot host an outdoor uh, track uh, uh, event here on campus and, and that's going to hopefully change uh, and we're going to make that case in point uh, before the board uh, in the coming weeks. It's a great time to be here in College Station. Thank you so much for your time, Scott. Thank you, glad to be here. Scott Woodward, our Athletics Director, right here at Texas A&M. Almost time to close out this edition of The Beat, but before we go, I want to tell you about Olsen Field at Bluebell Park. That venue is hosting the Alabama Crimson Tide this weekend. Texas A&M Baseball back in the top five and up top on the SEC West standings. They host Alabama Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday afternoon as well. Hope you'll join us at Bluebell Park. So long, everybody. See you next week.